My name is Ashok Goyal. I'm a professor of computer science at Georgia Tech, and I'm also the director of the National AI Institute for Adult Learning and Online Education. I think there are two things which AI will impact enormously. One is that AI will be able to personalize learning and education. Usually when there is learning and education, then you learn in a class of maybe 30 students or more students, 300 students in online classes. And so all the education, all the learning is targeted towards a group of people. But AI will enable personalization of learning so that each learner will be able to learn at his or her own pace, at their own place of work, and in their own manner. And that's going to be very powerful. The second big advantage of AI will be scale. AI will be able to scale learning and education so that everyone can take advantage of it and no one is left behind. I think it's going to be a combination of technologies. Certainly cognitive AI will be very important because we are dealing with people here. And so you can't ignore human cognition, you can't ignore human learning, so cognitive AI will be very important. But cognitive AI will be supplemented by generative AI, by knowledge, by probabilistic reasoning, by a number of different kind of reasoning. And, uh, was you, were you surprised about the quick uh, adoption or ChatGPT and, and these generative models? Um, so the question is, was I surprised by the adoption of ChatGPT in learning and education? No, I was initially a little surprised about how good ChatGPT is. So uh, five years back, if somebody had said, will statistical association methods succeed in building a chat GPT, I would, was, I would have been a little skeptical. So uh, chat GPT has turned out to be an engineering marvel. But I'm not surprised by its adoption in learning and education. I think learning and education and, and AI really are a very good combination, so I'm not surprised by that part. So yes, in my talk I did say that human-AI interaction is almost as important as AI. And the reason is very simple. AI has to do with what an agent can actually do, achieve functionally. Um, but AI could be very strong. But if people cannot use it, if people cannot learn from it, if, people, if the AI is not transparent, if the AI is not trustworthy, then people will just not use it. So it is very important to build good AI human-AI interaction, so that people actually want to use the AI. And that's why human-AI interaction is almost as important as AI itself. That's a very important point. So one of the things that has been happening is that we have been ignoring some kind of skills. The kind of skills we have been ignoring are occupational skills that get taught, taught in vocational and technical colleges. So one of the nice things about the National AI Institute is that we do all of our teaching in technical colleges and vocational colleges, um, which is very good because that's where there are a large number of skills, occupational skills, that you need in order to get a job these days um, and, um, uh, and to do something for the society, to contribute to society. So I think those are the skills that need a lot more emphasis. Overall, in school and in college, there are some things get, that are going to get automated. So it's perhaps less important to teach those things that are going to get automated anyway. Um, and to teach other things that are, are like, that are likely to subsist, for example, problem solving, uh, for example, negotiation, for example, leadership, communication. Those are really difficult skills uh, that don't get as much attention as they, as they need. Yeah, no, I do not believe that jobs of professors or teachers are in any danger. Um, I do not believe that at all. I know teachers are concerned, I know some professors are concerned, but teachers are so important. Uh, their role is not just to teach some subject. Their role is as models, as mentors, um, and that role is not going to change. Teachers are extremely important. They will continue to be extremely important they need not worry that AI is going to take any jobs. That's not going to happen. I 
I'm especially worried about two ethical challenges. Uh, I don't worry about ethical challenges like AI will take over the world or something of that kind. I think that's a far removed challenge. But in the more immediate future, there are two challenges. One is that AI requires a lot of data. Um, and whenever you have data, there are issues of data privacy and data security. So that's one challenge. The other is as AI becomes more powerful and starts helping people more and more, some people might feel a sense of loss of agency and loss of power. Um, and that's not good because we want to empower people. We don't want to take power away from them. Uh, but some people might feel a loss of power anyway. And how we deal with that challenge is going to be a big issue. Well, initially when COVID happened, then all universities moved online. Um, and the important thing there was that uh, some people thought that we could never move online. But in fact, we could all move online. It did move online. Some things worked out very well and some things did not work out as well. But what we have learned is that uh, things can be done online, but we simply have to improve its quality. And even now, as things have gone a little bit in person, it's much more like a hybrid model than a totally in-person model. So this COVID experience has really led to a uh, massive momentum for the online education model. So in 2014, my university, Georgia Institute of Technology, Georgia Tech in the US, uh, started an online program on Masters in Computer Science. At that time, it was a very novel program. Today, it has about 12,000 students. It's the world's largest online master's of science co uh, in computer science program. And that really had an effect for me because I was teaching classes in, them, uh, in that program and I suddenly realized the students had questions and questions and questions to ask and I couldn't answer all of them because I didn't have the time. And that's when I said, okay, I can't answer all the questions myself, but I can perhaps build an automated AI teaching assistant that can answer the questions for me. And that's how the idea of Jill Watson was born. And I created Jill Watson, it could answer some questions for the students. The students were happy because Jill Watson was available anytime, any place. They didn't have to wait for me. And I was happy because I could offload some, uh, some question answering to Jill Watson. And since then, the Jill Watson project has grown. And now, by now, more than 10,000 students have interacted with it, uh, more than 40 professors, more than 200 human teaching assistants. So that's been a very powerful experience. It's been a great conference so far. Thank you for inviting me here. I love Parma, I love the hotel, I love the conference. Uh, so far, so good. So I, I've really enjoyed it. Good to be here. <laughs>